So if your motivations are anything like mine, one of the main reasons you bought a Creality Sonic Pad in the first place was to increase your print speeds. I've done several videos now and you can see I've gotten as high as 180 millimeters per second on my prints, but everybody wants everything faster, including me. I wanted to see exactly how fast we could go with the Sonic Pad. So, I'm starting a series of videos and we're going to go over some different print speed settings and let's see exactly how fast we can get this thing to go. So first things first, just a couple things I want to go over and a few disclaimers I want to make. Obviously all of the testing I'm doing is going to be with my hardware, which you can see at the top right of the screen. Um, your mileage may vary. Obviously, different printers have different functionality and different capabilities. So keep that in mind as we go through this. Um, my testing is based on a Creality CR10S Pro V2. The next thing kind of goes without saying, but you know, different prints have different needs. The testing I'm doing is with the model that I'm using. I'm going to see how fast that goes. As time goes on, we're going to test different things through different videos, different types of prints. And, you know, again, I always recommend don't use what I'm saying as law. You want to try things on your own. This is just some guidelines to get you going and hopefully get you to a better spot and faster speeds on your prints. And the last thing I want to make sure to mention is keep in mind this is only part one of this series. Uh, I'm not a big fan of changing too many things at once because when you start doing that, whether your results are better or worse, you're not really going to know what setting made your print better or worse. So for this video, we're just going over print speed. Future videos are going to be on their way, going over things like acceleration and jerk settings. Um, over the course of time, though, we're going to get, well, I'm going to get my printer tuned as fast as we can possibly get it and still get a good print. So let's get started. So let's load some models up into Cura that we're going to print. And I already have some in mind. We're going to load them up, and I'm sure you might have seen these figures before. Let's move them around. And I'm trying to make these pretty large, so let's bump up the size a little bit on both of them. Get them in line a little closer, just so there's less travel between uh, the two figures. And now we can get into the speed. So I'm gonna go through these settings twice. The first time I'm gonna go with the default speed that I used to use before I added the Sonic Pad. And there's definitely some settings we're gonna need to change here. Um, First thing we're, these are just going to go on a shelf. So we're just going to lower the infill to 10%. Don't need it really sturdy. 200 degrees. Speed is 50. That's the default settings that Cura gives when you choose the CR10 printer. Retraction settings are all good. Fan speed settings are all good. This model is definitely going to need support for things like the hair and the right arm on Rick. Uh, well, the left arm too. So we're going to add in support. And in this case, I'm just going to use normal support. The overhang angle, I previously did an overhang test on my printer and I can use 55 degrees before I start seeing any problems. The support and density, I always cut down pretty low, um, usually lower than the infill. 8% 8, 8 should be fine for that. I 
don't like to fight with the supports and fight with ripping them off. Um, build, build plate adhesion, we're going to want to change that to a brim because there really isn't a whole lot of surface touching the build plate, and I don't want these things getting knocked off the build plate during the print. Uh, the only other setting, and for some reason it's never showing in here, is my support distance. Generally, it will give you one layer of support distance. I always change that to two times whatever my layer height is. So 0.4 um, makes the supports a little bit easier to break off later on. Um, it's really a pain when your supports are stuck to the model. So let's slice that and see what we get. If you haven't previously noticed, as soon as you add supports to your model, the slicing time goes up pretty dramatically. Okay, one day, 14 hours, 41 minutes. Which isn't too bad, but the whole point of this video is let's see how fast we can get our speeds up to. Now I've read on different websites, the travel speed, max travel speed for my printer, the CR 10 S series, S pro series is 300. So let's just go for it. 300. Um, obviously whenever you change your print speed, that's not going to be the speed that everything prints at your walls and things like that. Let me clear these, your wall speed and infill speed and everything, almost nothing actually runs at 300. But for the moment we are going to go with that. Um, it's still taking the wall speed up to 150. If you saw it before, I mean, the wall speed is going to be half of whatever your print speed is. So we're going from 25 to 150, pretty big gain there. Um, and it looks like even though I set the print speed to 300, the max it's giving me for the travel speed is 250. We'll just go with that for this test. And let's see what kind of speed we get when we slice that. And it took us to one day, six hours, 35 minutes. Now, in case you're wondering why, you know, we're increasing the speed by like five times and we're not getting anywhere near five times the time, it's because of some other settings like acceleration and jerk. These things are not going to be making long movements in one direction because they're tall and narrow. Uh, but I mean, that's a definite improvement. We're talking 11 hours faster to get this print done. I'm still learning about acceleration and jerk settings and what I can get away with, but that's going to be for another video. But let's see how this comes out and we'll go from there. And as you can see, so far so good. We didn't have any layer shifts or anything. And the whole print does complete successfully. So next we're going to remove the print from the 
build plate and get the supports off, I'm speeding this up because it's not the most exciting process to watch. As expected, be careful. Don't break your model trying to get the supports off. That's one of the reasons I use that extra distance between the support and the layer. Um, just something to keep in mind whenever you're printing. But we will blast through this and then we will see how the final print ended up looking. And here's their final result. This one is Rick, and it looks pretty good. Um, I'm pretty happy with it, how it came out, considering the speeds and having never tried it before. You can see on the back of the coat uh, the where the layers started. There's definitely some little notches there. In my case, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to be priming and sanding and painting. Same thing with Morty on his back. But other than that, it came out fairly well. Uh, it's sturdy and no problems whatsoever. So there you have it. A successful print at 300 millimeters per second. Um, for comparison, before the Sonic Pad, I was stuck at 60 maximum. So huge increase there and hopefully some more speed increases to come. Uh, in the next video, we're going to be trying some other things, adjusting the acceleration settings. And uh, as always, a couple things. A, if you have any other suggestions on things we can do to speed up prints that I haven't gotten to, maybe I will get to them. Maybe there are things I don't even know. But feel free to leave a comment. And as always, if you're enjoying the videos, if they're helping you out, please like and subscribe. And I will see you soon to go over acceleration and jerk settings. Until next time, thanks.